So I'm ready to start the second row and I actually laid it down, but as uh, luck would have it, that piece that I cut from that end, when I laid it here, it ended up leaving me with only um, a tiny little sliver that I would have to cut by the door again. So that's not gonna work. What I'm gonna have to do is take one of these new pieces and I'm just gonna cut it in half. So that's gonna put my gap or my, my first gap right about here. And I'll just reuse that piece later on. So uh, now I'm gonna show you basically just how to cut one of these things. It's pretty simple, but uh, just wanna be careful, make sure your fingers are out of the way and uh, you'll get a nice clean cut each time. All right, so now I'm gonna cut this one in half. It doesn't have to be exact because I know it doesn't matter that way. Um, because it's just, it, you want the floor to kind of have a randomness to it. You don't want to make every single piece the exact same distance. It'll end up looking like a brick wall if every piece is the same. So I'm just going to put it about in the middle and uh, all I'm going to do is come down with the saw and pull it through and that's going to cut the piece. If you've, if you've used a compound miter saw before, it's very simple. The only downside to this is this type of laminate is actually made similar to the way uh, concrete is. It's not real wood. Um, and so it's gonna, it's dulled my blade. Over the past seven, seven rooms that I've done, this blade has gotten pretty dull. So when I'm finished with this room, I'm gonna send this off to have it sharpened. Uh, but other than that, it's worked out pretty well, so. All right, so I might use this piece later on, so I'm just gonna leave this off to the side. Okay, so now I'm ready for the first piece of the second row. So the way that this manufacturer has us do it is the long edge is gonna click in first, and then the short edge will click in. Now, since this is the first piece in this row, there's nothing to click into, that's what the spacer's for. So the spacer is gonna give me the gap that I need for this this row. So all I'm going to do is put the piece in, hold it at about a 45 degree angle, which allows me to slide it along the edge here. Because um, once I put this down, it kind of locks it. I can't move it anymore. So at a 45, take your spacer, put it up to the wall, slide the piece up to the spacer, and then just push down. And this is what locks the tongue and groove together. Now you don't need to use a lot of force here because as progressive rows get put in, it's going to keep this flat. So here's our second piece, uncut, it's just the next piece in the row. Same thing, I'm going to put it with the long edge in first, push it up, slide it in, and push it down. Now, they say to just use your palm, but that starts to hurt after a while, so I'm just gonna use a real little ballot. Tap it down. Now we have the second piece in. So this is how you click in this particular type of flooring. Every laminate has a little bit different way. The manufacturer might tell you a different way, so read the directions. This is how this one does it. Um, and so now I'm gonna just keep putting in these rows, and it's gonna go a lot faster than that first row. All right, so I've got the first five rows down, and I've come to the other door, other side of the door. This is where it gets a little tricky, so you kind of have to get creative to uh, get the floor to slide underneath there. So because it has to come in like this and then click down, I just can't do that because it'll hit the door, the, the frame. So what I'll end up having to do is like slide it in. Well, as you can see doesn't want to do that because of the lip on this edge right here. And then also here, it's not going to click in. So I like how this looks. I just need to get it to click in together. So to do that, take the utility knife and I'm going to trim 
this little lip on here that this piece clicks into. Make sure to always cut away from you with the blade. You don't want to slice yourself with a box cutter. And then I just cut towards myself. So do as I say, not as I do. But keep your fingers free. Trim off as much as you can. This piece, you can trim this too if you want to. I'm going to try to leave it because I want to uh, let it click together. But since I got rid of how that works, I'm just going to use some wood glue. Just put a little bit on here. Hold this. Now I know it's a glueless floor, but when you get to this part, especially in a high traffic area like this, you don't want this piece moving. The rest of it can move with the temperature changes, but this piece will stay where it is. So, let's see if we can get this to work. Slide under the door first. take this little pull tool and I don't want to mess up this groove on this side, this tongue groove piece on this side, so I'm going to hook it just to laminate and I got to give it some nice light dabs. Alright, so now this piece is in, it'll glue on this side and this edge has the normal clicking mechanism still intact, so it's held in right here. Now I'm also going to have a little sliver of a piece here, but to, to make this easiest on myself, I'm going to make sure it's one piece from here all the way to this corner edge for, for the doorway. So stay tuned and I'll show you how I do this. Alright, so for this last piece that's right on this little entryway section, I want to make sure that this, this piece of laminate is the entire length. So I'm going to look at my other ones and I see that the second row here, this is the, the, the beginning of that piece and it, I just trimmed off a little bit at the end here. So what I want to do is start this sixth or seventh row, one, two, three, four, five, sixth row same as the second row. So, just take my tape measure and 26 and a half is this piece. So I'm going to cut a piece 26 and a half inches to give me a full piece on the other end. Okay, so I have a full piece here and what I want to do is cut that 26 and a half inches from this edge because this is the first piece that I have to connect to um, when I start a new row. Now I've made this mistake multiple times and when you go to do this you are going to do the same thing so don't feel bad but it has to be measured from the edge of the actual laminate with this female or this uh, male side showing. What, what everyone's going to do, everybody does it once at least, I did it probably 10 times, is I measured from here. Well, when you get to the other end, when you get to the other end, when you lay it down, you realize there's, since you put this edge down, there's nothing to connect it to. So, we're going to do 26 and a half inches from this edge. Now, show you a little trick here that I learned. I am not a carpenter, but what carpenters, the way carpenters make sure they have a straight line or a, uh, the right measurement is what's called a bird mouth mark. So we have 26 and a half inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Sharpie and I'm gonna stick it right on 26 and a half inches. And then I'm gonna go off just kinda at a little angle like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing again to go the other way. So that creates a little bird mouth, a little V. And that is right where you want to put the blade to make that cut. Because 
the width of the blade is going to make a difference sometimes and you might be off just enough that you have to cut a whole new piece. So I'm keeping this side of the board so I want to make sure that the kerf, which is the width of this blade, starts right at the point of this bird's mouth. So, I have it set right here. You don't want to start the blade on the, on the piece of wood or on the work piece yourself. And then I make sure my fingers are out of the way. So, start the blade, I'll uh, punch through, and then I'll pull forward or pull towards me uh, to make the cut. All right, so just check that to make sure. As you can see, maybe if I get the camera right. I'm actually a sixteenth short. So I was actually off by a little bit. But a sixteenth isn't going to make much of a difference in this particular sense. Actually, there we go. Now that I hooked it correctly. Uh, yep, yeah, right on the money. All right, so now I've laid this next row and I've come up to the corner here of the entryway. So obviously a full piece isn't gonna fit in here. So what I have to do is trim to make like a look, look like a L basically. So this is my next piece here. And first thing I gotta do is cut it the right length. So what I'm gonna do is take the tape measure. I'm gonna measure from the wall right to where this piece starts. Now, from the laminate, which is at about 46 and a 16th or so, to the edge of that tongue, which is at a little less than 46 and three quarters. So that distance is about the gap that I need. So that way, this prevents you from having to use the spacers all the way around. So instead of measuring to the edge of the nice laminate, just measure to the edge of the, uh, of the tongue. And that way when you cut the piece, it'll automatically have the little gap you need to be away from the wall on the other end. All right, so I cut my piece. And I slide it up, up against the wall here. And as you can see, there's just a little gap right there. So when I slide it over, Go over here and check, and that's right about the width that I need from the spacer. So it's just less spacers you have to use and worry about if you go, if you do it that way. All right. So now what do I do? Now that this is where it's going to be, I'm going to have to cut off the part that I don't need to form the little the long piece. So. I'm going to have to have the space on this side too, of this wall, so I'm going to make my mark even with if there was a space here, spacer here, okay, so that's the first cut that I need to make in this direction. Now we need to figure out the other direction. So I'm going to line up the board about where it would be, so line this up to here, and then I'm just going to slide it up. slide it up against the wall like that. Okay, so do the same thing. Spacer, slide it up, make a little mark. Okay, so now where those two marks intersect, I'll draw it with the square, and uh, then I'll cut it out with the uh, table saw. All right, so now I have my piece cut, and see if it fits. So it's the same way, and luckily, just because of the way 
where this piece is, I can slide it in and it gets to lay down just the way it's supposed to on its own without having to slide it underneath any corners or anything like that. And I messed up. Great. So, I put the piece in, and then I realized I forgot about that little piece underneath the door, which would look like crap. So, I have to redo this. Now, instead of measuring everything again, I'm just gonna go ahead and trace this along here, this pattern on here, and then I'm gonna add that distance that I need. So, stay tuned. All right, so I remade the piece that I've messed up, but to get this underneath the door frame over there and clicked in down here is gonna take a little bit of uh, finesse. So, I'm going to need my knocking pieces. Now, since this is such a long length, I don't want to trim uh, the tongue off like I did before, so I'm just going to knock it into place very carefully. So, I'll get the long edge in as much as I can down at this end. And I'll bring it as close as I can to the wall. And I'm just going to fold it down. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to click this piece to this scrap piece. be able to hammer on that. So, do what I just did, slide this in as far as I can. And bend down. Now what I'll do is as I push down on this end, I'll just hammer, just tap. Which, it's not as easy as I hope. So, Take this off. Actually, it went a little too far. So just pull it back a little. Alright, so I'm lined up here. I just have this bit that is still not hooked in. So I'll just use the Take my other tapping piece. Make sure that's not even the right one, but and it's it. So as you can see, if you use an actual piece, you're gonna destroy this. So you don't want to, you just want to use a scrap piece to do that. Now, that little bit of sawdust, we're in place. Now, it's a little off, but quarter round is going to cover the gap. So, I'm all set to yeah, cover that gap and over there. So, we're all set to keep going with the next one. Alright. 